Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. It's Tuesday, and since it's Tuesday, we have the same title for all of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract and Truth. That word tract refers to a gospel tract. The word truth refers to gospel truth, and obviously it's Tuesday, so it's Tract and Truth Tuesday. We want our Tuesday broadcast to really be used to bolster our desire to serve the Lord in evangelism, and also hopefully sharpen our skills to that end. I've got a question for you today. Let me go ahead and ask the question before I go any farther. The question is this, how do you see yourself right now? How do you describe yourself as a child of God right now? I'll come back to the question here in just a moment. Now, along the way today, I'm going to be encouraging you from the Word of God. My Bible is sitting open to the book of Ephesians and chapter 4. If you can, turn in your own Bible there, Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to that passage because it is the passage that I'm encouraged by, by the letter from the prisoner that I want to read to you. And it's a critical letter. It's going to help us direct our minds toward the question, how do you and I see ourselves? Now, whether you and I are beginning a new year, ending a year, smack dab in the middle of the year, whatever the time is, how we see ourselves is a pretty important question. We better answer it well. If you belong to Christ, you better answer it biblically. We want to help to that end. I've got a gospel tract here in my hand. Now, I've used that word, but I haven't explained it yet for today. A gospel tract is a short, written presentation of God's plan of salvation. They are in written format so that you can hand it out to somebody who needs Christ, even if you do not have time to verbally share the gospel with them. You can give them the gospel. They can read it later. I can tell you story upon story of somebody who received a gospel tract, didn't read it for quite some time. Then they did read it, and God had, in the meantime, prepared their heart, made them prepared to receive the gospel because their life was falling apart. They prayed to receive Christ. God transformed their life because somebody handed them a gospel tract. I think the best gospel tract ever invented by God is you and me living godly lives with a joyful spirit before the world, you and I looking at somebody eyeball to eyeball and telling them about Jesus. But since we can't do that with everybody, we come up with ways like gospel tracts to give the gospel out to people because everybody needs the gospel. Well, before I go any farther here, let me finish my little introduction here. My question again for the day is, how do you see yourself or how would you describe your life as a child of God today? I have already mentioned that letter uh, from the prisoner. I want to read parts of it. And he refers to himself. The prisoner refers to himself using two titles. He refers to himself as a restored prodigal, a restored prodigal. But then he calls himself the Lord's prisoner. Now, please know that he is not calling himself the Lord's prisoner because he's in prison because he stood up for Jesus. He's in prison because of sin, real bad sin. But he's come to the place where he realizes that he can be God's servant wherever he is. And in his letter, he's going to refer to the years which the locust have eaten. Do you know that phrase? It comes from the book of Joel, Joel 2, verse 25. Sin eats away at our life. But by this prisoner giving himself to God to be God's man in prison, God is abundantly blessing him. Just wait till you hear. And Ephesians 4, 1 to 3 are the key verses for this guy's life. I want you to hear his letter. Then I want to ask you the question, who are you? 
What am I to be doing for Christ despite my past sins, despite my present situations? What does God want me to do for him? I mentioned the tracks here a moment ago. The one track in my hand right now was entitled, You Can Know, with an exclamation point. You can know. The subtitle of the track is Real Answers to Eternal Issues. Real Answers to Eternal Issues. Questions like this are asked. Is there a hereafter? Guess what? It's answered by a Bible verse. Is there a heaven? Guess what? It's answered by a Bible verse. Is there a hell? Where do the saved go at death? Where do the lost people go when they die? All these questions are critical, and they're all answered by a clear Bible verse. But then it asks this question, where will I go when I die? And that question leads right into a clear presentation of God's plan of how to have a sinner transformed by receiving Christ as their Savior. This is one of my favorite tracks. Again, it's titled, You Can Know, Real Answers to Eternal Issues. Please, at the end of the broadcast, when my announcer gives our contact information, have a pen and paper ready and jot down how to contact us. We'll send you a free sample packet containing 40 tracks. This one, you can know, will be in there. Please be ready. We want to give that gift to you. You can also, by the way, go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.com. Org. That's BibleTracksInc.org, and you can order the free sample packet there online. Let me read those verses out of Ephesians right now. Ephesians 4, 1, 2, and 3 says this, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, beg you, that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Let me jump into the letter from this prisoner, if I can, right now. Here's what he says. Back in 2009, when my mom's pastor counseled me to turn myself in for my past crimes, he told me to trust God and obey the Lord for my future. That included my finances, he says, even though in prison the pay is so small. He said, I needed to trust the Lord with my money. During the first six years, at times, it seemed impossible to give to God with such low prison pay. And then he goes on to describe the pay scale there. He goes on in his letter and says, so sometimes during those first six years, I wrestled over giving my tithe from my gross, but I obeyed the Lord and also gave another 10% towards missions. I'm skipping part here, and he goes on to say, and God proved himself to always be meeting my needs, and also often my wants were met. The remaining money always went further than if I'd kept the other half selfishly. God always faithfully meets my needs. His letter continues. Do I still struggle with my faith at times? Yes, but repeatedly God has reminded me that he is always faithful even when I'm not. For that, I am so grateful. Now, during these beginning six years, as I learned to trust God with my money, I also gave my tithe and missions. Yet I often was discouraged because my gift was so small. It felt worthless. What good could come from them? His letter goes on, how I wish I could give more. God heard my heart cry when what I thought was impossible became because I was in prison, but oh, how God answered that prayer through an inheritance. If by God's grace, I live another 15 and a half years until my release, the Lord has made it possible for me to give far more than the years that I lost through the sin's wages. Through his amazing grace, he has restored what the, the years that the sin locusts had eaten. I have more than enough to meet my meager needs in prison, and if I live for years after my release, my future needs are also all met. How can I not give when God has showered his love upon this once wretched sinner, now a restored prodigal to the Father's heart. Yes, I still struggle with sin, but each year his grace gives me strength 
And I want Christ's victory over my life so that I will end honoring the Father with the rest of my life. So I trust the Holy Spirit is successful in transforming my life each passing day to become more Christ-like. He comes to the end of the letter and he says this, I hope to see many saved through the gospel tracts, he's referring to the tracts that are going to go out because of his gift, that these tracts that are planted while I'm still in prison doing the next 15 and a half years here. By planting seeds in the hearts of other people's loved ones, I know I can trust God to send somebody else to plant the gospel seed in the lives of my estranged family members who need Christ as Savior. Now that, friend, is a tremendous testimony. He asks the question, what can I do for God when I'm here? I ask you, how do you describe yourself? Are you a prisoner of the Lord? Are you allowing God? your present situation or perhaps some past actions of sinful actions to keep you from serving God? Well, here's a prisoner whose past actions were awful. They were terrible. He deserves to be in prison for his sin crimes. But there he found grace from God. He's living a vital life and he's having impact not only in the prisoners there, but by his generous gift, he is seeing the gospel go to far more people. If a prisoner can have that kind of vision to serve God, what about you and me for this year? Remember the verses he have as his encouraging verses from Ephesians 4? I wherefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Remember those verses? Well, let me share with you, please, three things real quickly. Three things that I learned from this prisoner's life. I learned, first of all, that there's a walk to be dealt with. The word walk means a life pattern. There is a walk. I beseech you, verse 1 says, as the prisoner of the Lord, I beseech you that you walk worthy. There is a walk for us to be living as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, and that walk needs to be worthy of the grace bestowed upon us by our loving Savior. Number two, there's a way to walk. Verse two says, with all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, and forbearing one another. That's the way we live our lives as believers. Our impact with the gospel will have far greater results if you and I live that way. With We walk a lowly life, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another. If you and I live that way, our gospel witness will have even greater impact. There's a work of our walk, verse 3 says, that we are endeavoring to keep, to guard the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Listen to me. You and I don't invent the unity. God invents the unity. You and I guard it. And the guarding, the connection that you and I have who know Christ, their connection is the fact that all of us who know Christ are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, and we're connected to the Spirit in Christ. Let's work together, no matter where you may live, no matter what denominations on your church door, if it preaches the gospel, let's work together with the gospel for the cause that others may come to Christ before Christ comes for us. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.